Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson. The lesson today is all about drawing wet skin. So thank you to everybody who participated in the voting last week. There was a lot of votes and at first, uh, wet skin was not winning. It was how to draw teeth. But then all of a sudden, the wet skin tutorial kind of came through at the last minute. So congratulations all those who wanted it. What I have here today is a sketch of an eel. Now if you if you can kind of see something behind it, it's because this particular mole skin is kind of thin and I have my kudu on the back and then this one. So I just I sketched one after the other. So that's what that that slight marking is that you can see through the page. Um, today I'm going to be adding wetness, water droplets and such to this eel and if we have time, depending on how long the tutorial actually is, I might add some to this goblin shark too, since it's a you know a marine animal. Goblin sharks are are pretty gnarly looking. All right, so where to begin? The first thing to do, and this is something that I stress in all of my tutorials, is you want to lay a good foundation and prior to adding any details. Now, what I'm going to teach you today, there is an exception to this rule, and that is you want to take advantage of the tone of the paper. What that means is th uh, the water droplets or the wetness that we're going to be drawing is going to have a spec highlight on it, okay? And you can achieve the spec highlight with in one to two ways. You can erase it, you can erase the graphite and have a spec on there, or you can work your way around it and build up a water drop around it and keep that tone of the paper as the spec highlight. Now you notice that throughout the face most of the detail is in the eyeball and around there. And then as I move back it's very very light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it that light. I might do maybe one one more pass like this across. Okay and then that's that's pretty good. Now since you are coming into this viewing this eel already drawn, this particular sketch took probably about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. There's not a lot of detail on it because the eel skin is, is just, there's not a lot of detail on an eel skin anyway. And the shading took the majority of the time. All right, so how do you begin? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a larger portion that is very faintly valued in. Uh, those of you wondering what I have, it's a 4B pencil, Faber-Castell, and that's all I'm going to use. I'm not even going to use a black Prismacolor because, quite frankly, the core shadow that is going to show through this, the water droplets, they don't really need to be that dark unless it's reflecting something from the background that is that dark. All right, so what I'm going to do is edge in here the outline of where I want a water droplet to flow down the head. So we're going to have one come down the cheek. Okay, now you notice I'm not gripping the pencil in the very front, okay? Um, I'm going halfway back so I can move my hand rather loosely and not have to worry about jumping into details right away. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on the outside of that line. So that very faint line that I drew, and I'm also keeping this pencil sharp, by the way, that line that I drew is going to be where the core shadow is on the skin. And also, the light source I'm going to have up here, and it's going to be shining this way. It's kind of like a, a an above ambient light, so it's dispersed evenly in all directions. It's going to cast a small shadow on the skin because we don't think of water as having any shape. It kind of just falls into whatever it lands on. If it's a drop, if it comes down a crevice, it's inside of a crack, etc. Well, when water sits on top of especially wet skin or even, even mud for that matter, you're going to see that it actually does have a bumpy shape to it and it's gonna cast a shadow. So I'm gripping the pencil at the very end like this and I'm running my pinky across the page. Uh, you can't see it off camera though, but I'm very lightly going to shade in on, the, on just one side. So since the light is on the left side, I'm gonna keep it, uh, the, the shadow on the right, like this. 
Now, the cool thing about this is you can get a little bit darker with that. And I'm going to make tiny circles instead of a straight line of where that shadow is. What the circles do, what the circles do is that it it kind of adds some roughness to the shaded outline instead of just one single thick line that looks rather cartoony. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to take the pencil again and I'm going to add thickness on the other side. Like this. Now, I'm going to get slightly darker. Why am I going to get slightly darker? Because if you notice the eyeball over here, you'd be surprised that that eye and that darkness of the eye socket will actually reflect in that eye droplet. So you want to take into consideration what's happening in the environment around the water droplet. And also, the, the stream of water coming down, um, it doesn't have to be one single stringy shape because water collects in different imperfections of the skin. And while just drawing wetness can happen on all kinds of surfaces, for the sake of this video, we're keeping it as uh, skin wetness. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more thickness, almost like the end of a teardrop over here. And then I'm gonna put in some darker shadow only on that side. And then I'm just gonna let go. I'm not gonna add anything else on that. Now I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna lightly put in another outline and I'm gonna come up the head and I'm just gonna fade it off into the, the paper. I don't need to put anything else. Here, in this open area, I think it's a good opportunity. Instead of drawing one teardrop, let's put a very out, uh, thin outline of something a little bit pointier. So maybe the water collecting on that head is dripping down off the side of it in a kind of an odd shape. So there's almost like two. Think of, think of icicles. Whenever you look at a gutter or of your house or maybe the car bumper, not all icicles are these perfect carrot shapes that are sharp. Some of them don't even form sharpness at the end. They're, they're still rather blunt at the end. So what I'm doing is I'm running the pencil back and forth very lightly on the very bottom because down here is where the core shadow is. Think of, you know, think of a sphere. Okay, those of you that already know the, you know, um, shading of the sphere and all the principles of that, Light's coming this way, the highlight's there, the core shadow is running around down there. Same thing happens on the roundness of water. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that value right there, and then you see the darkness right in there, and then there's a light part. We're going to fade that up into the lightness. Right like that. Okay, and now the cool part is, as I'm outlining this water dripping down the head, I can pick and choose on the edge of this water droplet where I want the dark core shadow to really reflect darkness around it. For example, I can go any space I want on this droplet. But here, since the eyeball's here, and then here's the eye socket, and maybe there's something off in the, the background that it's going to reflect, I'm just going to put a darker speck right there. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to fade the pencil off on all directions of that dark speck. Now you see, the way I'm playing with my pencil is I'm not going in and making sure that that speck is perfect. What it looks like up close is here's the speck like this, and I'm taking the edge of my pencil and I'm just kind of pushing graphite off of it, thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin like this. Of course, it's filling up more area because this is a tiny droplet. But in, in larger versions, you know, I'll just do the side of my pencil. I'm pushing like this. I'm just going away like this. Now look what's happening on the edge of that darkness. It's flowing into the lightness of my paper. Now, each one of you drawing, if you're drawing along with me, you might not be drawing on moleskin paper. Moleskin has a natural cream color to it. And I've stated in other videos, I personally like moleskin the best just because it feels like I'm drawing on old, old fashioned map paper, like I'm a pirate or something, or it's like old parchment paper. It just has a cool, authentic feel. If you're on pure white paper, the same principle applies, so don't worry about it. 
I'm gonna round off some more shading and then the same thing happens on this smaller arm of the droplet. So you can see that there's the black part. Okay, so I might outline it just a little bit more as it comes around. And then here, I'm gonna do the same thing, but very lightly. It's not going to be as dark as this. Why is that, you, you might ask? Because think about the shape of the head. The farther down the head I get, the less light is going to be reflected back up onto the droplet, so it's going to be collecting more shadow. Now, you will have bounce light on these water droplets, but it's so small and minuscule that it, it doesn't even matter if you include it or not because you're probably not going to be able to see it. Okay, so let's, let's put this up here, and then let's have some fun with this. Put like almost like a... Uh, like cracks in the skin, or not skin, but cracks in the earth. You just kind of move this stream of water up the head. And then what you can do is add maybe like a drop. Okay, so maybe there's a drop of water right here. But let's put it slightly off kilter. So it's not a, it's not a perfect teardrop shape. And it's not a circle like we think of teardrops. Instead, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like an oval, but stretched out a little bit. And I'm very lightly drawing it down here, and then I'm just going to make a smaller one right under it. Here on this side, and I'm going to put down a different kind of droplet, and these are specks. So you're probably wondering, what do you mean by specks? So I'm doing tiny, tiny little circles, and I'm going to make jagged shapes like this. Okay, so let's zoom in here so you can actually see it. All right, so now we got that. And these little jagged shapes are going to be the skin that's wet, and then the the whiteness that's showing through is going to be the, the moisture sitting on top of the skin. And then what's going to happen is we're going to start connecting all of the stuff that we are sketching. So we're going to take these smaller uh, smaller droplets like this, maybe, maybe some small rounded ones, kind of like sweat that beads on your head. Take that, and then you're going to have the maybe the stream that comes up here. Now, when you have an eel, it's not really going to look like this unless you take it out of the water and look at it because <laughs> it's going to collect the water just like if you were to take a fish out of the pond or whatever, and then you could see the water dripping off of it. So I'm just going to start adding in some core shadows that are, that are rounded. Because it's going to be like water flowing down the side. Now if you zoom out, you can start to see the effect that it has on, um, on the different areas of the drawing. Let's see if that, uh, hold on a second. There we go. Just had to zoom in there a little bit. By the way, I am getting a another camera soon. I'm I'm recording on my Google Pixel 6, so hopefully you guys are at least enjoying the lessons here. So what I'm doing is I'm not going straight. I'm not stroking these straight. I'm actually doing small circles. Because what happens is when you do a circle, if I'm just making the shading really big as an example. I'm going back over my previous marking and it's filling in the gaps that I might have missed prior to it. So then when you add a, a bunch of them in, it's like a night, it almost looks like cloth, but it also adds texture to it. Okay, so there you go. Now, one thing I like doing is when, when water drips down the side, so here is part of the eel skin where it comes in, and then you see the, I guess you can call it its cheek, it's, it's almost white. There's no shading in there because I'm just using the tone of the paper as the highlight. All right, so that, that part's going to be fun because then when you put a drop right there, like that, and it's pretty dark, and then you just fade the, the, um, the stream up on to the head so it looks like a water droplet is dripping down on it. It's pretty cool. Now, when you have just one small area that you're doing it with, it's probably going to be a little discouraging because you're thinking in your head that the entire thing is supposed to be wet and I barely have anything done. Well, you, you, need, to, you need to build up 
the the moisture on these things. So like say for instance, maybe the water doesn't flow down the head the same way as it does on the side. In that case, maybe you can put in some small shapes like this, but stagger them. So try to do different shapes at a time. And I would even put in some bumps maybe on top of the head here where you can see the silhouette change. Okay, so that way it indicates that water is, is flowing off the other side of it. It's kind of fun. Now here, if you want to draw, uh, if you want to draw water that's dripping off of it, which is kind of fun. Oh, actually, you know what? Now that I saw this, I'm going to need to darken this water droplet, and I'm going to fade that up into the side. Uh, it, it didn't look right. It, it almost looked like it should have been darker, and probably this too. So I'm going to add in some little specks here on the side. Now I'm just kind of picking and choosing where I want to put it. Okay, and then another fun part is think about the skin and the muscles and everything that's happening underneath the droplets. So you see that the water is coming down the head and it's going in a little bit, and then it's coming out. Wherever it goes in, there's probably an indent in the face or the bone structure. So I'm gonna add in very, very lightly some shading right there where it starts to bend. And then that'll help me make more believable shape like that. And then I'll, I won't turn my sketchbook. I'll turn my hand just enough so I can get in there. And um, where the water starts to curve under right there probably should be a little darker. And again, like, like that technique I showed you where I faded off the brush strokes or the pencil strokes from that dark spot, I'm going to do it again here, but very, very subtly. Subtly? Subtle. I'm subtle with it. There, that sounded better. All right, so now it's starting to look like there's actually some wetness on here. Um, here, this is where it gets kind of fun because I'm going to use just the pure color of the paint. There's no shading down here. So I'm going to put in a light outline of water and then I'm gonna put in a little bit of a coarse shadow right in the middle of the water and fade that up and then I'm gonna show some some graphite well some uh, some grayness I guess you could say some value right around that edge I'll make that darker so it shows up there we go so now it looks like water is dripping off of it and then we can have a skinnier one so notice how lightly I'm, I'm sketching this. I'm going to collect more water at the end of it so it looks like a drop, like it's about to, to drip off. I'm going to put some value in there. I'm going to put some darkness right in there. Not, not very much at all. And then that's it. I'm not going to touch anything else. So what that does is I'm, I'm allowing the, the tone of the paper to do all the work for me. All I'm doing is just drawing an outline of it and lightly shading in some areas where, you know, it's reflecting the environment. I'm pretending that this, this eel is underwater. So let's put some more shadow on the, on the actual chin here, because there's going to be some cast shadow maybe on the teeth. And eel's teeth is pretty white too. There we go. So let's, let's put some, some paths of, of some water coming down here and maybe some smaller drips. There we go. Let's have some fun here. Add in some more wrinkles. That's going to be another lesson, by the way. That, that was one of the choices for the, uh, the poll that I had. It was drawing teeth, drawing wrinkles, and drawing wet skin. And wrinkles, you know, I'll get into a whole other lesson about that. But when you, when you establish value first, any markings that you put on top of the value it already adds so much more depth because in between the marks, it's already shaded for you. You don't have to worry about going back in and shading on top of lines that might not be dark enough. All you have to do is push dark enough so it can show up on top of the shading. And then your work is done. Like that. I had, uh, <laughs> I had somebody in my last video, um, one of them, say I, I hold a pencil like a five-year-old. I didn't realize that five-year-olds hold their pencil like this, so thanks for noticing. I actually hold it like a six-year-old, I guess, but <laughs> to each their own. There we go. 
So now we're putting in some more wrinkles, maybe around the mouth here with some textures. And then now it's going to start to take uh, take on some real realism here. So hopefully today's lesson was good. Now, when one thing I suggest is before you start drawing the skin, just practice water droplets in general. You don't even have to do skin yet. So for example, let's say you want to draw a water droplet. So very lightly, just put in, maybe this is a water droplet right here on a table. Okay, and here's the table. So there's the water droplet. All right, now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark off very lightly, kind of like a kidney shape of where no shading is going to happen on this thing. It's not going to happen. It's going to happen everywhere around it. And then what you do is you, you lightly shade in very lightly around that. Okay. Now, you can use your eraser for this part if you want to make a really neat drawing. Um, I'm going to outline that just a little bit more. I'm barely gripping my pencil. Now, if you start, if you practice your water droplet like that, you'll get a little bit better at it. Okay, and this is going to collect a core shadow. All right, so once you put, uh, like say for instance, um, the light source is coming down this way, so the core shadow is gonna wrap this way. And then you're gonna have bounce light happen down there. So where am I core shadow at? It's gonna be right around in there. That's a little different for water, but same principles apply when it comes to it having a core shadow because it's just like a sphere. Now, this is a very rough sketch, but once you start practicing that and then you put in, you know, the spec highlight and where you want it, you'll get better at uh, knowing where your values are and where you shouldn't be adding value. Okay, so for example, everywhere up top here that surrounds that highlight should get the minimal amount of value possible. And that's because most of the light is hitting the top of that droplet. Now, it, uh, another really good thing to practice, and this is something that most, most schools teach in foundation sketching, is uh, glass, so if, like glass bottles and still life. So when you think of still life, you're probably like, oh man, I, I don't want to draw still life. It's the most boring thing in the world. It kind of is boring, but it also teaches you how to, how to sketch materials pretty well. All right, so there's that. Now, um, one thing that I do suggest is if you're going to put highlights in manually after you sketch everything, get an eraser that's probably on the end of a mechanical pencil because they're so tiny and you can get some minute details on there. Other than that, I wouldn't touch it. I would just train yourself to use the the paper as the value. All right. Hopefully today's lesson was good, guys. Uh, it was a lot of fun and th there's plenty more lessons to come. It, when I do feathers, when I do fur, when I do wetness and, and all of that, there's going to be multiple versions of it because there's long fur, there's short fur, there's short feathers, there's long feathers, etc. So I gotta, I'm going to teach how to do mud and cement and, and leaves and all that fun stuff. So thanks again, and uh, I would love to hear your comments below. Like and subscribe if this is really helping you out, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.